Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Suzanne and today we're going to be looking at the Robinhood investing app. This is a super simple app for beginners to use and even if you're already experienced investing, it's just a really nice stripped down simplified app and it is built with mobile in mind first. So if you find that you want to trade mostly from your phone, this may be the app for you. So I'm going to go ahead and share my phone screen with you guys and we will walk through how you can actually fund your Robinhood account, how to buy and sell a stock, and I will show actually buying and actually selling a stock, and then we'll just look at some of the other features that the platform has. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open up the Robinhood app. If you haven't logged in before, you'll need to log into your account. So this main screen is where you're going to use most of the functions on Robinhood, but we will come back to that in a minute. The first thing that I want to point out is that if you sign up with Robinhood through someone's link, you will get a free stock. And how you claim this free stock is by clicking on that little gift box at the top right that says free stock. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And once we are in here, this is where we can claim the free stock that we have, or we can invite our own friends and get more free stocks. So how this works is basically when you refer people to Robinhood, they reward you by giving you a free stock. Most of the time, I've gotten ones that are around like five to $10 in value, but I have heard of some people getting some really cool ones. So comment down below if you've ever gotten a cool free stock from Robinhood. So I'm going to go ahead and claim one of the free stocks that I have waiting for me. So one way to get to this page is to click on that past button in the top right. Another way is if you just go back to the main screen, click on the little account icon, which is the icon that looks like a person in the bottom right. And from here, you can also get to that same page. So we'll click on that first row where it says free stocks and we will get to the same thing. So again, we're just going to click that past button in the top right, and then you'll see this page with a list of free stocks that you have or of referrals that you've made. So to actually claim the free stock, you'll need to select on whoever you referred. And then once you're there, it'll take you to this little scratch card looking screen and you can select whichever reward you want, whichever one of the three, or if you don't want to do the little scratch off step, then you can click skip in the top right. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what this scratch off thing looks like. So we're just going to select one of these randomly, and then you just color over the screen until it shows you which stock you actually received. So you'll see that this stock was worth $4. Again, that amount varies just depending on whichever random stock they give you. So now we'll just go back to that same account screen, which is again, that little icon in the bottom right that looks like a person. And from here, we can now look at how we would actually add funds to start investing. So the first way that you can do it is if you see those boxes at the top, the, those are kind of like your important um, things to do or important th announcements, things like that, things that you might want to look at. So you'll see that that first one with the little icon of the bank says add funds to your account to start investing. So we can click there or we can click transfers, which is that third row from the top. So I've gotten comments on past videos with other platforms where people are like, how do I get money into my account? great, okay, but how do I get money out of my account and back into my bank? And how would I automatically deposit so that I don't have to think about doing that every month? Well, this is the page where you go to do all three of those things. So this will give you the options to transfer into Robinhood, transfer out of Robinhood, back into your bank, and it will show you how much cash you actually have available currently in your Robinhood account that you could potentially withdraw. This is also where you would go to see which bank accounts you actually have connected to Robinhood and where you would go if you wanted to add different banks or take any banks off, anything like that. So if you were setting up a bank account to get money into Robinhood to actually trade with, you would click on that first transfer to Robinhood row. 
Once you do that, if you do not currently have any bank accounts connected, you'll click that link account button. And from there, it brings up another screen, which will just tell you which app they are using to link your bank account to Robinhood. So we're going to press continue. And then from here, it will pull up a pre-populated list of bank accounts. Now, these are just some of the most popular bank accounts, like you see that there's Chase, Bank of America, all the big ones are there. But if you are with a smaller bank, with a local bank, or you just don't see your bank listed on this main list, you just click on that search bar at the top and you can enter your bank, search for it, and connect it. So that's pretty much that. Um, if you want to withdraw money from Robinhood, same thing, same process. You would need to have a bank account connected to Robinhood. And then after you do that, as long as you have available cash in your account, you would be able to withdraw it and have it go to your bank. So we're going to go back to that little my account page and the next section that we are going to look at is investing. So from this page, this is where you're going to be able to see your portfolio balances. You can see the makeup of what you currently own. So you can see that in this account, I've pretty much sold everything, but I do have $37.84 in stocks. That's the value of the stocks that I currently own. And the cash in the account is $339 and four cents. Then you'll see in this next section, it says instant deposits health. So basically Robinhood allows you to have this instant deposit limit where it lets you use your money when it is transferring from your bank. So if you're not sure how much of that deposit limit you have left, this is where you would go to check that. The next section, you'll see dividend reinvestment. This is also called DRIP. And if you are a dividend investor, a lot of people do like to sign up for DRIP. It's basically where any dividends that you earn are automatically reinvested back into that stock for you. So for example, if you earn a dividend from Coca-Cola, whatever that amount is, once you earn it, the app would automatically reinvest it back into Coca-Cola. And that's pretty much a basic overview of how dividend reinvestment would work. I am going to show you what it looks like to actually enable that in just a second, but we're going to look at the other two sections first. So this next section is options trading. If you are interested in trading options, you will need to click that get options trading button and you can go through the process of signing up for that. Now, this last section is pretty important, and that is the day trades that you have left. So if you have a margin account, you are under the PDT rule, and that goes for any brokerage that you're using. Do Google that and do more research on that just because it is very important if you are on a margin account that you are following the PDT rule. So basically the PDT rule just limits the number of times that you can buy and sell the same stock within a certain amount of time. So this day trade count on Robinhood is going to help you keep track of those round trip trades as they call them. So this is super useful and you can also click on that day trade settings button at the bottom and look at your different options for that. But now we're going to go back to the dividend reinvestment and we're going to actually enable this on this account. So something great about Robinhood is that pretty much any page that you click on, it provides you an explanation and answers to common questions when you go to that section. So this first page, when we click on that enabled dividend reinvestment is just going to explain what it is, how it works. So definitely read through that. And then we're going to press continue we're going to, of course, read through the agreement, and once we have read through it, we're going to click accept. Then it says you're enrolled. Hooray. So the next thing that we're going to do is click on this edit settings button at the bottom, and this is going to allow us to pick and choose which stocks we actually want to be in the dividend reinvestment program. You don't necessarily have to do all of them. You do have the option to choose. So if we click on that, on the next page, we're going to see that once we enrolled in the dividend reinvestment, it's going to turn it on for all of the stocks that we have that are eligible for that. So from here, if you click on any of the individual stocks, you can turn it on or off for that particular stock. So for example, if you had Coca-Cola and Ford and you wanted to reinvest dividends from Coca-Cola, but you didn't want to reinvest dividends that you earned from Ford, you have the option to change that. Or if at any point you want to turn it off for all of them, all you have to do is click that main toggle at the top next to dividend reinvestment, and it will toggle it on or off for all of these stocks that are eligible. 
Going back to the My Accounts page, the next row that we're going to look at is the Statements and History page. So from here, you can view your account statements, you can view any tax documents that you need, and you can view your account activity. So when you've bought or sold things, when you earn dividends, etc. So when we open this up, the first section that we see is recent history. So right here, we're going to see that we have some dividends, we have some referrals, basically any activity in your account is going to pop up here and you'll be able to see the most recent five things that have happened. If we scroll a little bit further down, this is where all of your account statements are. So just like you get an account statement from your bank or from your credit card every month where you can review all of the transactions that happened, same thing goes for brokerages. They give you an account statement every month that you can go back and look at. And the section underneath that is tax documents. So when tax season rolls around and it's asking you for your documents related to your investing history, this is where you would go to actually download all those documents that you need. But as this says, it will become available the February following each year you have sold a stock. So for this account, since it's August, it's quite a ways away from February, so that's not available for us to look at yet. So the last section that we're going to look at under this My Accounts page is the settings. So we're not going to go through every single option on this page, but I do want to point out a couple of cool things. So the first thing is the two-factor authentication. So if you do want to set up a two-factor authentication to log in, you can do that. And they do give a lot more options than brokerages usually give you. So instead of just having a second layer of verification automatically go to your phone number or something like that, you can connect it to an authenticator app or you can connect it to your phone if you want to but it does give you a list of several different options so that you can connect the authenticator app that you prefer to use. So the next setting that we are going to look at toggling on is the accessible colors option. So if you are colorblind, Robinhood is one of the very few brokerages that actually gives you an option to turn on an accessible color option. So it basically just will make the reds in the app more of a magenta color. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and leave it on for the rest of the video. And you can see when we go back to this main screen, if I scroll down, all of those stocks that have gone down in value that usually show as red have now turned to more of a pink magenta color. So now that we're back on this main screen, we'll start going through the main functions of Robinhood and probably why you clicked on this video. So the first thing that you'll see at the top is that we have our total account value. When you're looking at this graph, you can see that when I pulled it up, it defaults to one day. So since I claimed that free stock, there's a big spike, which really was only like $4 but you can change this time frame to look at the value of your account over a week, a month, three months, a year, or the entire time that you've had the account open. If we scroll down, it will give you a list of the stocks that you currently own, and those are going to be underneath that stocks section. If we scroll further down, you'll see that we have some watch lists. So Robinhood does set up a default watch list for you, and all this is is a list of stocks that you want to watch the price on, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean that you own these stocks. You could if you've bought them, um, but it's basically just a custom list of stocks. So let's say that we don't necessarily want the default list that Robinhood gave us. You can actually make a new watch list with all of the stocks that you want to put on there. So we'll go ahead and set up our own example one. So we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and click on this create new list button. So once you click on that, you'll have the option to name the list. So like that first watch list was named my first list or something like that, you can choose whatever you want to name this. So I'm going to name this tech and we'll put a couple of tech stocks in here. So now that we have this list made, we can see that it's empty. So we're going to click on that green find stocks button at the bottom and we can start adding things. From here, it will take you to the search bar where you can either enter the full name of a company that you want to invest in, or you can enter their ticker symbol, which is that combination of two, three, or four letters that make up that stock. So for example, if we start typing in Apple, you'll see that Apple pops up, both the name of the company and their ticker symbol, which is AAPL. So either way that you type that in, that will pop up and you'll have the option to select it. So to add it to your list, you'll just click that green plus mark on the right side, and then let's add another one. So let's add Microsoft. 
and we'll do one more as well. So let's go ahead and do, I don't know, Dell. All right, so once we are done with that, it will take you back to that watch list that we just made. So now we can see we have our tech watch list with Dell, Microsoft, and Apple. This is the default order that it came up in, but if you want to change the order, you can click on that sort by button, and it will give you the option to sort by the symbol, by the price, or by the percent change. But actually, let's say that we want to change this watch list because we don't want Dell on there anymore. So what we're going to do is click on those three dots at the top right corner, and then we're going to click on edit. So from here, you can either edit or delete your watch list, but we're just going to edit this one. And now you'll see that instead of the check marks, we have little X's on the right. So if we click on one of those, it will actually take that stock off of our watch list. So we're going to go ahead and take Dell off. And actually, this is just kind of a fun thing, but if you want to change the icon that's associated with that watch list, for this one, it shows that light bulb. If we want to change that, we can click that little pencil button that's next to the icon, and we can change the emoji that is showing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and we can change it to an iPhone. And does that really do anything? No, but it's kind of fun. So now we're going to just go back to that main page and we can see that that new tech watch list that we made is now at the bottom. So it'll always be on that front page whenever we open the app. And now we're going to actually look at how you buy or sell a stock on Robinhood. So for buying, as an example, I'm going to buy one share of Upwork, which is like an online freelancing platform. And for selling, I'm going to sell one of the free stocks that I've gotten that I currently own in my account. So to do that, you're going to click on that little magnifying glass button in the bottom middle of your screen. This is going to take you to the browse page and from here you can use that search bar at the top to again search for either the company or the ticker symbol of the company. I'm going to go ahead and select that and oops, from here it's going to ask me if I want to set up fractional shares. I will do that but just a little bit later in the video so I'm going to dismiss that for now and we'll do that later on each page for each stock or ETF is going to show you a very similar page to that home screen that you get when you log into Robinhood. So for this one, we can see that we have a graph of the price change over time. Again, it defaults to just one day, but we can change that to a week, a month, three months, a year, or five years. Unfortunately, five years is the furthest out it goes. So if you do want to see a time frame that's longer than that, you will need to to just Google that and look at that elsewhere. If we scroll down to the next section on the page, we'll see stats. So for those of you asking where you go to see the P&E ratio or the dividend yield or the average volume, this is the page that you do that if that information is available for that particular stock or ETF. Right below that, we have analyst ratings, which are kind of just a general, like what people think they should be doing with this stock or ETF. I really don't pay too much attention to that. Some people like using that, but it's there if you need it. Underneath that, you'll see the earnings section. So you can see that there are dark pink circles and there are lighter pink circles. The darker ones are the expected earnings that they had and the lighter ones are the actual earnings that that company had. So if you want to look at that, if you want to compare it, that is where you can see that information. If we scroll down a little bit further, you see this related lists section. So this is either lists that this stock is a part of, or it gives you lists of stocks and ETFs that may be similar to whatever you're looking at. So if we clicked on one of those, it would give us a separate list of stocks. I'm not going to do that right now, but if you want to see related lists of stocks, that's where you do that. Underneath that, and I think this is kind of cool, but it shows you what people who bought this stock or ETF also bought. So people who bought Upwork also seem to have been buying Redfin and Uber and Twitter. So that's kind of just a cool list to look at if you need some more ideas for 
maybe stocks that you would potentially be interested in. That's kind of just a cool list that they give you. So underneath that, you will see a description of the company. This description will pretty much be the same across like any brokerage that you look at these companies. It's just their standard description, but it also shows some information underneath like who their CEO is, where their headquarters are, how many employees they have, and what year they started. So to actually buy a share of this stock, we're going to obviously click the big buy button that's at the bottom. And again, it's going to pop up with a screen that asks us if we want to buy in dollars or in shares. So Robinhood is rolling out a fractional shares option, which basically means that instead of buying one whole share of a stock, you can buy half a share or a fourth of a share or whatever fraction of a share that you want. So if you don't have enough for one full share, you could instead buy $5 worth of a stock. So that's all that that's asking for, but I'm going to go ahead and select shares. Now by default, once we click shares, it's going to give us the screen for a market order, meaning that it would buy it at whatever the best current price is. So how we're going to change that is by clicking in that top right corner where it says shares. From here, we have that option to change whether we want to buy in dollars or shares, and we also have the option to actually change the order type. So if you aren't sure what order types are, we do have another video on this channel that goes over the four basic order types. The only one in here that wasn't covered was a trailing stop order, but I can do a separate video on that. Again, Robinhood has a nice short little explanation under each order type. And if you actually click on one, so if we click on limit order, it will give you a nice little graphic quickly explaining what that means. So I'm going to purposely place an order that probably won't go through in the time frame of this video, but for the maximum price that we're willing to buy Upwork for, I'm going to put $13 as the limit price. And once I do that, I'll hit continue. On the next screen, you'll have the option to either execute the trade during market hours or during extended hours. I'm going to leave this on market hours and press continue. So this next screen is kind of cool because not every brokerage allows you to do this this easily, but Robinhood does. So if the order that we put in, which for me was buying Upwork at $13, if the price does not hit $13 by the end of today, it will automatically cancel that order. Or we have the option to keep it active for 90 days, meaning that as long as the price hits $13 within the next 90 days, the order will still execute. And if it reaches the end of that 90 days and it never went down to $13, it will just automatically cancel the order. But basically, if you're trying to get a price within the next 90 days, it prevents you from having to go in every single day and reset that order. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it on today and we're going to go to the next screen. On that previous screen, remember we entered our limit price already of $13 and now we get to select how many shares of it we actually want to buy. So for this, I'm only going to put in one share and then I'm going to press review. This just gives us the same information that we just entered. And at the bottom, it gives you a little description of what is expected to happen, right? And then once we are ready to actually buy, all we do is take that green bar at the bottom and we swipe up and it sends our order. And it says our order is placed. Now you'll notice that this says shares purchased, zero of one. Why does it say that? Well, it's because the current price was at $13.49. It has not actually gone down to $13 yet, so it has not actually been able to buy it yet. So for those of you that ask, why does my order say open? Why doesn't it say executed or complete? That's why, because the order has not yet gone through. So if you want to look at that information that was on that review page, again, you'll just click that view order at the bottom and it will take you back to all of that information. Now, if you can't really remember what you did or you might have a question that you want automatically answered, what you can do is go to this messages button in the bottom right. So it's the one left of the accounts button. And from here, we can see at the top that we have a notification for that Upwork share that we just bought. 
So if we click on that message, it gives us a little review of what we just did. And then it gives you a few pre-filled options for questions that you'd like to ask, or if you want to go ahead and like cancel the order, you can do that directly from this messages screen. So a lot of the questions that you guys post in the comments, you can actually just go here and get the official answer from Robinhood. So why hasn't my order been filled yet? Or why hasn't this order been filled yet? If you click on that, it will give you an automated response with a relevant article that could answer your question. So if we click on view article, it will take you to the Robinhood website where you can read through the different reasons why your order may not have been filled and hopefully you can find your answer there. So since this trade probably is not going to go through in the time frame of this video, I'm going to go ahead and place another order at market price. That way I know that it's going to go through and I can show you guys what it looks like once an order is actually completed. So we're going to go back to Upwork and instead of doing a limit price like we did with the last order, I'm going to select market price and we're just going to put in one share again and you'll see that the current market price is $13.00. 50 cents. So then I'm just going to click review. We're going to go ahead and swipe up to buy and now we have one share of Upwork and that order has gone through. And we can see that where it says shares purchased one of one, meaning the one and only share that I was trying to buy was successfully purchased. So once we click done, now if we go back to the Upwork page, since we now own one share of this, there's this new section that we see called your position. So it will show you the number of shares of that stock or ETF that you own. It will show you the current value, the average cost that you bought it for. And then you can also see how much money you've made or lost on it, which since we just bought this a few seconds ago, that's going to be zero. But assuming that you've owned it for a little while, that's where you would go to see what you've made or lost on that particular stock. Now I will show you how to sell a stock. So I'm just going to sell off some of those free ones that I got. And what we're going to do is we'll do one with a limit sell and one with a market sell. So same as buying. So let's go ahead and do the limit sell first. For this example, I'm going to sell this share of plug power that I have. So we're going to click on that and then as our limit price, you'll see that it asks for the minimum price you'll sell plug for. So I'm going to go ahead and enter 860 and we're going to see if this executes. So same options for selling that you had for buying, either market hours or extended hours. I'm going to go with market hours and then we're going to have the option of setting that same time frame. So I'm just going to stick with day. Once you're done with that screen, it goes back to that main screen where you enter the number of shares, exactly the same as how you would buy. So underneath where it says sell plug, you can see that I only have one share available. So we're going to go ahead and sell that one share. Once you press review, again, it gives you that same order summary at the bottom, just like when you buy, and you just swipe up for it to sell your stock. Now, since this was a limit order, it has not yet reached that 860 price, so it has not yet sold. And you can see that where it says zero of one shares sold. But assuming that it does at some point today reach that price, you would then get a notification that it has successfully gone through with the order, meaning that you have successfully sold that one share. Now, let's do one where we are doing a market sell. I'm going to go ahead and select this HL, which is Hecla Mining, and we'll put in a market sell for one share of this stock. So all we have to do is click on that sell button. It automatically defaults to that market sell option, but if you want to change it, again, you can click that shares button at the top right and select a different order type, but we're going to stick with a market order. So I'm going to enter one share, we're going to click review, we're going to swipe up to sell, and it's that simple. We have successfully sold it, as you can see where it says we have sold one of one share. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comments what else you guys want to see. And remember, if you're confused about order types, we do have another video on this channel going over the four basic order types. So be sure to go and watch that. And I will see you guys next time.